What's up guys, welcome back to Man Cave Collectible Reviews, coming at you today with another figure review. Today we're taking a look at the brand new released Spawn Cygor figure by McFarlane Toys. Head over to Big Bad Toy Store for all your toy needs, whether it's Hasbro, Mafex, Hot Toys, and all the other major brands. They've got it along with $4 flat rate shipping. Click the link in the description to see what BBTS can do to fill that need you have in your collection. This thing is a monster, no pun intended. It's huge. It is a very, very large figure. We'll take a look at scale here a little bit. There's already some things that bother me a little bit and I haven't even gotten out of the package, but there's also some things that I really, really like that I'm already seeing as it's in package. We're gonna talk about all those things here shortly. I did pick this up for $49.99. Let's jump right into it. So obviously we got the Spawn branding right here on front. Cygor's name down below. Now this is interesting, 14 plus, not a toy. I can't say that I remember really seeing that quite very often as far as toys are concerned. This definitely shows you this is aimed at the adult collector. As we spin around to the side, we got some nice comic book style artwork there of Cygor. Spinning on around to the back, we do have some promotional artwork of Cygor, the McFarlane branding down here in the bottom left. 22 moving parts on this guy and some more spawn branding. And as we come around to this side, additional promotional artwork and branding located here on the side. Let's go ahead and crack this guy out of his packaging and see what we got. All right, guys, so we got Cygor on our review table and out of his packaging. Let's take a quick look at the accessories. Wait a minute, we don't have any accessories. My bad on that. I was thinking for a $49.99 figure, we would have accessories. We do not have accessories. We did, however, get a peg stand. Now, this peg stand has the spawn branding on it, so you can obviously use it for someone else. But this guy, pretty much for the most part, is going to be standing on four legs. So, or two arms and two legs, I guess we should say. So you're not really going to be able to use that peg. You're not going to need the peg in any way. Now, one thing that is a little bit different he had these twisty ties uh, that were wrapped around him. Now, these are not your traditional twisty ties. These are base, These are all plastic, but they were wrapped up around each other in a way that they were used as twisty ties. So just kind of something different, something new. It is just a clear plastic, and, uh, you know, you can cut them fairly easy with scissors or, or even a sharp knife. Uh, so they it worked out pretty well, not as rigid as the typical twisty ties that we see in a lot of these bigger figures. So with this guy, as I said earlier, there are no accessories, which is a little bit disappointing. You would have to imagine, or you would think at least for that price point, we would get an additional head, an additional set of hands, something else to incorporate into this guy so he's not just a statue. And that's something we'll talk about here a little bit more when we get to the articulation for this guy. As far as sculpt, he looks phenomenal. I'm sure you can see that. That probably comes across the camera very well for you. McFarlane has done a fantastic job on sculpt and paintwork with Cygor. We'll go ahead and bring him in for a little bit of a closer look, but you, know, you can just see here all up in this head area, you know, the cybernetic portion, I guess, of Cygor is just phenomenally painted. Got some black wash there across it. The red, the nice red eyes, the mouth, the, the tongue is a real nice glossy paint, so it gives off how a tongue should look in real life. We got real nice battle scarring with red paint there. As we come on down, all these battle wounds and battle scars, but also probably a little bit uh, from the different surgeries that he's had just to become what he is today. Really nicely painted. Got the staples holding that skin together, painted in silver. Coming on down, see there in the hands. The hands are stationary in this fashion to where you, you, know, you cannot bend the fingers. They're pretty much what you got is what you got. That's kind of one of the deltas, I would say, as far as this figure's concerned. You just can't do a whole lot with the posing of the hands because, you know, there's no grabbing hands, there's no holding hands. Uh, you know, it'd be really cool if you had a pair of hands, you know, that you could almost look like you were grabbing Spawn or grabbing another character. Not going to be able to do that with this guy. Real nice paint here on, again, the pipes, tubes that are kind of part of his cybernetic body here on the arms. I mean, just look at the detail that went into, you know, the back area here. I mean, that is just really, really well done. McFarlane absolutely killing it. Now we do have, you know, what a lot of folks call the kind of rubber diaper here. So all this is the rubber diaper, wraps all the way around front. You can see that. So that is covering up all the articulation area here in the, in the legs, in the feet area. So, you know, as far as 
uh, getting this guy to stand up, you know, you're not going to be able to do that because of what happens with the so-called rubber diaper there. So this is something we see McFarlane using a whole lot uh, with different characters in the DC Universe line, as well as now in the Spawn line. So there's just, there's just not going to be a way to do it. You're just not going to be able to really stand him up. And, and that's, you know, really it's giving off the vibe of more of a statue than a action figure. And that kind of dates back to, I collected and still have some of the kind of early Spawn figures from the early 2000s. And he built most of those as statues, more or less. They had very limited articulation. They look fantastic, just like this guy does. They had fantastic paint, fantastic sculpts, but they were not meant to be articulated. If you articulate them, it actually would ruin the sculpt. And that's what we're seeing here with Sigor and this diaper piece. So let's talk a little bit about the articulation on this guy. So one area uh, that they did succeed very well is in this head. So you can see here, we can get the head down pretty far, but also up a good bit. It kind of hinges up and down. That way, because of the crouched over nature of the figure, he's able to look straight forward with no problems, kind of giving off that screaming look. Now, you can get him turned about that far to his left. Uh, you're hindered here by the shoulder armor. And then over here on this side, about that same amount. So not going to be able to get a full 360 there, which is okay. That's There's really just a ton of movement in there. So I'm, that's acceptable in my opinion. Coming on out here to the arm, that's about as far up as I can get that arm to go. So pretty limited range of movement there. I can't get it to go all the way up and around either. That's about as far as I can get that to go. You can hear that plastic just cracking and moaning in there. I don't want to really stress that anymore. But this is a soft plastic here, so it allows, you know, to at least get that much range of motion, but it's very limited there. There is no bicep swivel here. That's all one piece. As far as the elbow, we can get almost straight out and then right to about 90 degrees. That's as much as we can get on either side. Now, one thing I will point out, they did try to go ahead and sculpt in the fur into the elbow. So that's nice, kind of into that uh, articulated joint there. So that looks really good. You know, as far as when that's articulated, you still have the fur in there. So that's well done there by McFarlane. All right, we've got no articulation in forearm area, but we do have lots of articulation here in the wrist. It allows for that wrist to come way down, go way back pretty far, and that will full 360 spin. So, and that's, that's very much needed because as you would imagine with a gorilla to kind of get that proper look, you're going to need that wrist to kind of come backwards in there versus, you know, going straight out. You know, that's, that doesn't look right. He just falls over sitting on his hand. So that's really uh, well thought out there to kind of have that where you have tons of range of motion in the wrist. So I really like that. Well done on that. Now, as we come on down to the lower body, there's no articulation in the upper abdomen or chest area. We do have articulation here in his waist. Now, again, this is where, well, there you go. There we can actually look at what we got inside. There is the large peg. There's the articulation for the thighs in there. And then the ball peg obviously just fits right there into the lower abdominal area. So pop that back on, pops on pretty easy. But again, that's as far as you can get it, as far as back. You can see how that looks. And then you can bring it forward about that far. You know, when it's forward, that's when everything is flush and fairly smooth, concealed. That articulation is concealed. When you bring it back, that's when you start getting those gaps right here where the diaper is. So again, just not meant to be heavily articulated. As far as the leg is concerned, you can pull that leg back to about right there. Now, once you get it, there's not much you can do with it. You can see how I have it articulated. Look at the gap that it that it creates by pulling that leg back. That leg's got to be forward in order for this all to kind of be flush all the way up and around. Okay, and that popped off. Let's just remove, let's just take that off for one second while we while we do this. Okay, in the in the knees here, we can get pretty close to a straight leg. Let's see. Oh, there we go. So you can see the legs. We can get fairly close to having the legs straight for the most part. And then the knees are double jointed, believe it or not. They are double jointed knees in there, but maybe 90 degrees, 90-ish, I think. And then down here in the feet, 
we have slight movement, slight pivot, a little bit of forward and back, not a whole lot, obviously, hindered by all of this. It's just, you know, bottom line with this one, guys, if you want this figure, it's made to pose in one fashion on your shelf. That's it. That That's the bottom line on this figure. If you like the look of this figure, it's the figure for you. If you like to do dynamic posing and you want to do some cool action figure photography, this is, this is going to be a tough figure for you to do much with. All right, guys, so here's a little bit of size comparison for you with some of the other McFarlane figures that have come out recently. We got the Clown and Violator. You can see that Violator and Cygor are real similar in their mass. Violator obviously a good bit taller because he is able to somewhat stand up, but you pretty much cannot stand Violator all the way up. You kind of have to give him the Baxter Stockman legs. I don't know if, you, if you're if uh, you familiar with kind of how the Baxter Stockman legs were back in the Playmates days and obviously the Super 7 days of here as well, the more recent figure. You kind of have to have his legs in this fashion in order to get him to actually balance and stand up. You can't stand him straight up or he'll just fall right over because he he is an extremely heavy figure. By Cygor having the pose that he has, you'll never have to worry about him falling over on your shelf. So that is a big benefit to that. And then the clown here uh, stands pretty well on his own. I do have the peg stand there for him since McFarlane throws those in. Let's throw in a spawn figure. So there we got a spawn figure thrown in. That is the Kickstarter modern spawn. So it looks really, really good um, as far as the, the scale, the size of all these guys. McFarlane's doing a really good job as far as providing us with some good scale on these. And again, this is a considered a seven inch scale line as most of McFarlane's are with the DC Multiverse as well. So guys, that was just a quick little overview of Cygor. Just to kind of throw out there and sum up the figure in my mind, for the $50 price point, I feel like we should have gotten some type of accessories, even if it was as simple as one additional hand or a pair of hands, an additional head sculpt, we should have gotten something additional for that price point, in my opinion. I think the current figure, the way we received it, $39.99 would have been more in the right price range for him. But at that $49.99 price range, accessories are a must. The limited articulation, that really depends on what type of collector you are. For me personally, this guy's gonna be fantastic for me. He's gonna sit on my shelf and look just like he looks right now. If you like to do action figure photography, if you like to do dynamic posing and do different things like that, this figure is going to be really tough. It's going to really challenge you as far as getting those pictures right because there's not much more you can do with this guy than what you see right here. We don't have extra hands. The diaper area really, really hinders the sculpt and the look of this character if you do anything more than what you currently see on the screen right now. So that is certainly a negative. The sculpt and the paintwork, phenomenal. One of the better figures that McFarlane has put out as far as the spawn line or really any line that he's currently doing right now, in my opinion, all the way out to the DC Multiverse, this is one of the best. The sculpt, he nailed it. The paintwork, he nailed it. Should you buy this figure? Again, that's totally up to you. I can't tell you should you buy it or should you not buy it. What I can tell you is I think there's going to be certain people that this works out really well for, me being one of those. I think there's going to be folks that really like to do a lot of posing and things with their figure. This is really going to challenge them as far as their collection is concerned. And again, that price point, that's a hefty price point to get no accessories. That is my biggest gripe about this figure is I would have liked to have seen at least one pair of hands with this guy. And my guess is this sculpt, this is not the last time we're gonna see this figure. I would assume we will see a repaint. Maybe they'll call it a deluxe deluxe and add in some additional hands or additional head sculpt. You never know with McFarlane. He certainly comes out with uh, some pretty cool ideas when it comes to his figure making. So we'll see what he does down the road. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hit that like button if you did. Definitely drop those comments down below. Let me know what you think of this figure. What do you think of the price point? What do you think of limited articulation? Are you okay with the lack of accessories? Do you think there should have been additional accessories? What should those have been? Love hearing your guys' opinion on these figures as we review them. And then lastly, hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed to the channel. Hope everybody has a good rest of your day. Until next time.